I grew up in the little town of Ski uh, in Norway. It's a tiny little uh, community, uh, snow, snowy mountain roads uh, and beater cars. And my dad was into rallying on a grassroots level. And when I was a kid, I got to do a little bit of go-karting. And then I started hit, uh, hitting up the, the mountain passes with my uh, BMW. And from then on, I've never looked back. So the Pro Series at the time was quite interesting. Uh, for, it, for the series, for drifting itself, Formula D wasn't even around. D1 was nowhere around in the US. So uh, this one drifting organization called Club 4AG, which is like a Corolla enthusiast website, uh, they saw a lot of spark and interest in you know drifting from a small core group. So what they did was essentially uh, provide us with some track time. It was an open parking lot at Irwindale. Uh, Irwindale is actually where it started all drifting, and uh, we held small drifting events at the parking lot. Really small scale, you know, no spectators. It was just just a core group of us, uh, which included myself, uh, Taka Ono, uh, Andy Yen, which is currently a judge. So we have a lot of the more hardcore uh, original. Uh, core group of drivers that are still around today. And at the time, you know, it was kind of like just just playing around, you know, having a great time, sliding the cars around and uh, a mock competition. Uh, and then some sponsors actually start to see some interest in drifting and uh, that's kind of where it started for me, was where I picked up my first sponsorship at 15 and uh, my career just flew from there. Top 32 tonight, um, I was lined up with Daigo Saito, who is a total ripper, and I knew it would be pretty tough. We had a power steering issue this morning. We tried to get parts to, to really put a permanent fix on the power steering pump. It wasn't possible. We didn't have any spares, so we decided to run it the way it was. And when it was time to run 32, lined up with Daigo, went in for my lead run. <laughs> Just, you know, wanted to not sacrifice line or anything I wanted to put down just like the best qualifying run I could so I went hard at the first clip big angle big angle to the wall touched the first wall and thought I was in a really good spot I wound up basically knocking it down a gear to bring down the wheel speed to keep me off the wall and when I grabbed the power steering to, uh, to get back on the throttle it just would not move and you know when you're when you're playing with inches on these walls going you know, 60, 70 miles an hour, and you really don't have time to do much uh, when something fails. And you know, my power steering failed, the belt came off on us, and it wound up sending me into the wall really hard. Uh, you know, it's disappointing, but it is what it is. I thought, I thought we showed our stuff a bit, but you know, it would have been nice to come out and put down that big upset. But uh, there's always next time. Oh yeah, we'll be at Irwindale, one way or another. We'll be there. Matched up against uh, Matt Field. Now this is where it gets interesting for the second run. I was following, and uh, as soon as we entered turn one, Matt had a slightly shallow line, and uh, at that point I didn't really have any runoff space, so I ended up clipping the first clipping point. And uh, I don't know if that caused it, but I saw a plume of smoke come out from the passenger side hood. And I just kept going through, kept going through, and I noticed something was kind of funky about the car. But uh, I tried not to let it bother me, just made it to the finish line. And that's where my spotter, Takeshi, was like, dude, the car's on fire, the car's on fire, shut it down. So I just shut it down immediately, uh, got, ready, got ready to pull the fire extinguisher, but I thought, wait a minute, if I pull the fire extinguisher here right now, the whole thing is going to be ruined. The whole car is going to be under fire extinguisher powder, and uh, we're not going to be able to get it to run again. Now, if there was a chance that the car was going to be fixed, because it could have been minor as a uh, small oil leak. And that's exactly what it was, extremely minor. I uh, pulled it into the pits and uh, found out the leak was uh, you know, really small, fixable. So we got it fixed and uh, got ready for top 16.
final uh, for the fourth time this weekend. We took on a previous champion, Rhys Millen. I call him the godfather of drifting, fellow Hancock tire teammate. We were joking in the pits, you know, he's, uh, he's so experienced, you know, he's, he's able to clear his head every single time. And I think that's really what you need in order to take that win. And I just wasn't able to do that today. I uh, came into the first turn. I flicked it around for the second, but I flicked it a little too hard, even though I just tried to do my normal lead run. Uh, cashed it, but cashed it a little too much, and straightened up, just pointed straight at the wall, and I barely got to steer it away. I, I hit with my rear quarter, bent the hub, bent the axle, uh, and I wasn't even sure if we were going to make it out for, for the second run. But thanks to, I want to say, the best team best drift team in the world, we made it. Uh, these guys put the car back together in five minutes and that was basically 50% of the rear suspension changed up for new parts and I think that goes to show their legacy in the sport, our will to do well and uh, getting back out we put on a very good chase run against Reese but uh, we didn't, couldn't make up for, for the loss in the lead run, ended up in a second. Still very stoked, we were about to hit the playground. See you in Irvindale.